meeting of the Minnehaha County and Sioux Falls Planning Commissions. Um, once again, reminder that if you walked in, make sure your cell phones are off for the meeting as a courtesy to everyone present. The two planning commissions work together on land use and zoning matters within the rural area surrounding the city. The area is displayed or will be displayed on the screen. After information and testimony is presented on an agenda item, the members will discuss the matter and then each planning commission will vote independently to arrive at a decision. When the joint agenda is completed, the City Planning Commission will adjourn and the meeting will continue as the County Planning Commission considers items beyond the joint jurisdiction. Any final action on the conditional use permit request will take effect five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal is filed. By, at the planning office by Tuesday, September 5th at, 9, at 5 p.m. In the event of appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission and City Council for a joint hearing on Tuesday, September 26th at 5. Is there a motion to approve the um, July 24th Planning Commission meetings for each side? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 City side, motion? So moved. Second to approve the minutes as presented. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same side. <laughs> Motion carries on the city side. Thank you. Um, there are no consent agendas, other items, so we'll move directly to the regular agenda. Um, we'll need a motion to approve the regular agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. City side for so approval moved. of the regular Second. agenda. So moved and seconded to approve the regular agenda. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries on the city side. Thank you. The following procedure will be followed. I will request planning staff to present a report on an item um, and, I'll, I'll, and anyone requesting um, from the audience requesting to address the issue will need to get up, come to the microphone, state your name and address, and then speak so we have documentation of where you're from. So you'll have to get up and come to the mic and not just speak from where you're sitting. Um, so then we'll go ahead and get started with the first item, which is item two. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Item number two is a conditional use permit 17-54. Uh, this is a request to allow a larger uh, accessory building than 1,200 square feet. The property is located at 47646 Slip Up Creek Road. This is uh, about a mile and a half north of Sioux Falls uh, in Andes Acres. So it would be where uh, on the Jim Zweep Memorial Highway and then turn off to the right. Um, as you know, we limit the size of accessory buildings in uh, a rural subdivision of four more lots to 1,200 square feet. And this applicant is requesting a total of 2,376. And uh, he, as you sh can see on the site plan, he's requesting a 30 by 60 foot structure with a 12 by 24 foot bump out for a total square footage of 2,376. And the uh, lot adjacent to it uh, this shows the subject property, and the lot next to it uh, does have a, uh, has two accessory structures that total 1360. Um, back in 2009, there was a request by uh, a property owner at 225915 North Cloudus Avenue who requested a conditional use permit for 2396. At a joint planning commission, that CUP 09-74 to allow that larger building was denied. And I have prepared a map that shows the location of that subject property. Um, and in 2010, the property about approximately four lots away at 47638 Slip Up Creek Road requested a conditional use permit to allow uh, 1320, so that was 120 square feet larger. That was approved. So <clears throat> the planning, uh, the applicant's plan uh, to use that building as an accessory building should not really impact the neighborhood. And the, but the applicant's request is 
the first time in this development where you would have a, a building that greatly exceeds 1,200 square feet. So in this situation, um, the request greatly exceeds what is has been typically allowed in that neighborhood. And based on the fact that we tend to want to be consistent and fair to all the people in the neighborhood, um, staff is recommending denial. However, we are suggesting that we could allow up to 1360 of, a, of larger accessory buildings. That is what is adjacent to um, the property uh, to the east. So this property here has 1360. This property is the conditional use permit that was approved for what was it, 12, uh, excuse me, 1320. And this property is the request that was denied at 2796. So I am recommending denial. If you should decide to allow a, a building that's 1360, I have a set of proposed conditions in your staff report which you could uh, use. And I'll go over some of the slides with you. So this is the subject property. The applicant um, is proposing, if you look at the site plan, I'll go right back to the site plan here shortly uh, or quickly. Here's the house. The applicant wants to put the larger building back here. This is on a three-fourths acre lot. So here's the building with the little bump out that I explained. And this is the subject property. You can sort of see they have staked it out in the back. And I uh, went back and took a couple pictures. So this is the, sub the area where they have uh, proposed to put that larger building right here. This is looking to the south. This is the conditional use permit for the uh, larger building, the one that's 1320. And uh, the, other built, the other property was denied, so there is no larger building there to take a picture of. But I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. And any questions? Any questions? Let's go for a pro forma. Mr. Chair, I have a question, but I'll go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what I wanted to ask is, uh, need to understand a little more about the previous conversation regarding recommendations on sizes that would be allowed um, in light of the fact that this request would seem to qualify for that suggested change to a larger square footage. It, it, and, uh, it would. Okay, and the second question I had is, um, if it's if it's going to be approved, you recommended a group of other conditions, uh, including uh, that it only be allowed for personal residential storage, et cetera. There's another group of those. Um, does that hold true for the 1,200 square foot buildings now? Well, if, if it's under 1,200 square feet, you don't need a conditional use right. permit, and it's just by right by the process of obtaining a building permit. So we don't we wouldn't put conditions on a, like a building permit, right. but in in any event, uh, no commercial activity would be allowed because it's not zoned for that. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Other questions? No. Uh, Scott, could you tell me exactly the size of the lot there? It's point seven four acres. It's three fourths of an acre. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Scott. So I would now open the floor for proponents or for the petitioner to come and present information. Is the petitioner here? Yes. Okay, yeah, um, wanting, wanting to put the building up for personal use, of course. Um, 
On the square footage, actually the building itself is going to be 2,088 square feet, but I have a I have a storage unit there now that's 12 by 24, which is another 288 square feet, so that would make the 2,376. Um, that building is removable if necessary. Um, as far as my neighbors, I, I've talked to a few of them around there. None of them have a problem with it. Um, like they said, they would rather see a building up there to store the stuff in than seeing stuff set outside. So, and that's uh, part of the reason I want to put up the building. Scott, you need to uh, give us your name and address. Uh, oh, uh, the Scott Zwack, uh, 20, uh, I can't remember the address right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott Zwack, uh, 47646 Slip Up Creek Road, uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Any questions for the petitioner? Scott, uh, would a uh, would a smaller building work for you? And uh, you mentioned taking down the other outbuilding you've got. Uh, yeah, the other outbuilding is portable. It 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 can be uh, it can be drug off the property. It's on skids. Um, yeah, a smaller building would work, but I kind of um, got this one planned for all the stuff that I own and would like to put in it. Okay, thank you very much. I got, I got, Whoops, guess I'm I got sorry. one more question here. Sorry about that. Uh, would you see in the future any plans to put any plumbing in there? Is it just going to be, be a shed on a slab of cement? It's going to be a sled, uh, shed on a slab of cement. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the proposal? Okay, step forward to the podium, please. Uh, my name is John Beck. I live at 47645 Sorrell Street, which is directly kitty corner uh, behind Scott's property over there. Um, my question about going to that biggest square footage, like the 2,400 square feet, is that going to possibly set a precedence for other people wanting to build bigger than the 1,200 square foot in that area? Um, a lot of the lots out there are a little bit less than an acre. And it's a, it's a really nice area with a lot of people have nice yards. Um, I just anticipate if, if we start allowing the 2,400 square feet or so instead of 1,200 that a lot of other houses out there or properties might start to put that big of a building out there and kind of get away from that more open feeling out there and not so many big buildings out there. Um, I know there's a house out there, the one that's in the purple on the map up there, I can't quite see who that is, but they built a really big building out there a couple years ago and just kind of looks out of place. Um, so that's that's my concern is getting too big of a building. I'm all for Scott building out there. He's done a lot of great things with the property so far, but I just don't I don't want to see something so big out there. Mr. Beck, if, if he built a um, if you took out the smaller building, would that make it uh, easier for you to live with, so to speak? He's got this uh, existing uh, building that he could remove and build this one larger building. Um, yeah, it would, but I, I still think, I don't know, what is that, 2,000 square feet then, Scott, that you're yeah, yep. keeping them in? Yeah, it'd be right at 2,000 square feet, yeah. So that'd be like a 40 by 50 then? Uh, 30 large, uh, 30, 30 by 60. 60, and then you would 12 by 20. So yeah, that that'd make it better, but um, I just I don't want to see that <coughs> precedent get started out there for such a big building. Any other questions from the city side? Any, Any more other speakers? Any, Any other? Sure. Yeah, you. looks like we have another one. Tony Lee, 47563, 255th Street. And I would actually, uh, this is a hot topic in several areas north of Sioux Falls. And uh, I actually wrote a letter to planning and zoning addressing this that 
it's not just about having an additional outshed. It is what is the adjacent properties like? Does it fit the neighborhood? And how does it affect? And, and I, I guess this is the first time I've been here in a long time where I actually heard what is in the adjacent properties for an outshed. So I'm really in favor of hearing this to be scaled back. And is it directly in my neighborhood? No, but I was here not that long ago where a gigantic shed is going in, just you know, out buildings of 4,000 square feet, and I have 900 square feet, and I'm the adjacent property owner. So it, it's important. It is important. It's going to continue to, to, to develop, and it really does need to be taken into consideration. I, I, I personally don't know them, know them, but I don't live that far from them. And so I encourage you to really put a lot of thought into what is adjacent to the properties. There's a reason for that. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? All right, at this time, those comments are closed, and each commission will discuss um, the item. I guess I'd maybe start, if I may. Yes. Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to try to find a size that does seem to fit the area. Uh, hopefully that would be acceptable to the applicant, still allow him to do what he's trying to do, but fit within the precedent that's already been set. Uh, maybe that's, I think, 1360 is what we were looking at. Maybe that's 1360. Maybe it's 1500. I, I guess I don't know for sure. Uh, I, I do believe there's got to be something that we can figure out that fits there and hopefully be acceptable. Uh, I guess I would look for discussion from both sides on what do we think that size could be that, that fits the area still gives the applicant a chance to try to reach his goals. Comments from the city side in response? I think we should try to do that. If, if I may. Um, so Scott, you said 2,000 square feet was what you could minimally get by with? Yeah. So. Mr. Chair, in, in my opinion, I think um, we should just leave it the way it is, in my opinion. I don't think we should increase it at this time. It is a controversial issue. I appreciate everybody coming out. I know it takes time out of your evening um, to state your opinion and voice your concerns, and I, I think there's something that we should take into consideration within these locations, and um, I think we should continue with the way that things are as they're set today and not increase the size. You're saying to leave it 1,200 rather than even the recommendation? I am, and okay. I, again, I think we have to look at these as a case-by-case -case situation and appreciate the neighbors coming out and, and voicing their opinions, and I think that's what we need to take into account. Could I ask the question again of the previous discussion about 2,400 square feet? I mean, you commented that that was something that the city was well, this interested in. I, I didn't quite see how that fit the recommendation you just made. Well, we're going to have a, probably a discussion at, under items like new business or old business when uh, the two items that are going to be heard tonight in front of this body, these bodies, uh, we'll have a discussion about whether you feel like you'd like to amend your ordinance as well. <coughs> um, the <coughs> city staff, uh, the planning staff, Mike Cooper and Jeff Schmidt have indicated to me that they would like to see some kind of a change because they feel that we are being, uh, get, that we are receiving way too many of these requests. So we either, even, and I appreciate your, your suggestion to hold the line, you know, basically leave it at 1,200. And if that's specifically for this site, that I understand that. But it, if that's to leave it at 1,200 throughout the joint jurisdiction area, you will continue to get these requests. <coughs> I mean, it's just as simple as that because uh, we, we get, there's a lot of interest when people move out and have a little acreage, they want a larger building to tinker in, to have their boats in, whatever, keep their equipment, and 
So these, we're, we, we get a lot of these requests and, um, and so something to consider. And, and Mr. Chair, excuse me. Um, I, I, mean, I agree with that and I think once they do that review and come up with a plan of action or suggestions or comments, more than happy to hear that and hear what their suggestions are after they review that information, come back in front of us and then make a state your case and then we can review it at that time. Does that make sense? Or? We can prepare something in writing and provide it to you. And you know the other option, excuse me, uh, is you, you can deny the, the request and <coughs> if we change the ordinance to 2400, the applicant certainly can, right. wouldn't even have to get a conditional use permit. But just so everyone understands the process <coughs> to, to undertake an ordinance amendment, you are talking about six months approximately. So from the time we have a couple discussions at this, in front of this, these bodies, you know, the joint planning commissions, and then you do the hearings and you take it to the, the elected officials, it's at least six months. Mr. Chair, could I ask another question? Excuse me. Um, your recommendation, if it was approved, was for it not to exceed 1360 or 1,360 square feet. Was that based on the size of the lot and in regards to this future discussion, are you going to prorate things based on the size of lots or? No, that, that, is n that wasn't <coughs> my intention. Um, the reason that, that I fell upon the 1360 is because it's exactly what the neighbor has next door. They have the property to the east has uh, two accessory buildings that total 1360. And so when we talk about, um, for example, the neighbor asked, you know, what this might mean if we allow a larger building. So typically what that means is when we start getting requests in Andy's Acres, the subdivision, um, we would then allow people to have a building or we would recommend that if someone else wanted a larger building, that we would allow the building that's basically the largest building in the neighborhood, which then could be S Scott Swacks at 2376 or 2000, whatever, should you allow a larger building. Scott, with your alternate recommendation, the 1360, was that including that 288 shed that's there, or was that separate? It, it makes, it, it, it's just a total, a total of 1360. So, so they total could, if it's five buildings, yep. you were talking total. Total okay. building, to so sure. they could have one building at 1360 or two buildings or whatever. Thanks. Madam Chair, I, I appreciate Andy's comments there. I, I'm not in complete agreement with them. I think that uh, people do have more and more stuff these days, whether it's uh, I think we currently have a limit of four snowmobiles is all you're supposed to have. Uh, something like that. David Holt, is, is that four? Three? Only three snowmobiles? What am I going to do? Uh, I don't own any. Um, but anyway, I, uh, <coughs> this is obviously an important issue for the county because we, uh, we probably every, every month when we meet, we probably have five or six to exceed. And I've been in places that were 16,000 square feet or 10,000 square feet, those, those are ginormous. But uh, in, in this case here, I think I'm, I'm going to uh, favor the applicant uh, uh, having outbuildings uh, totaling as much as 2,000 square feet and that's a motion I'll make. It doesn't mean we have to agree. I mean, yeah. this is. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Second. And I'd just like to state also that 2,000 isn't that big. Um, I know that's a concern to the neighbors out there, but what would your feelings be if you had a lot of automobiles, antiques out in his yard? Would that be devaluing your property? Is that what we would hear next? I know they'd say if it was inside, it'd be much better. So I'm going to. Uh, echo with what Jeff said and I, I'd prefer to have it at 2,000 square feet. Okay, we have a motion and a second and I think um, we'll need to discuss and confirm but I want to just read through the conditions um, so that that's clear. 
So the total accessory building would not exceed 2,000 square feet. A building permit is required prior to construction. An inspection of the proposed new accessory building would be made to ensure it does not exceed 2,000 square feet. Only personal residential storage shall be allowed. No, com no commercial uses or commercial storage. All outdoor buildings shall lighting shall be full cut off and fully shielded design. And the planning and zoning department deserves the right to enter and inspect the accessory building at any time after proper notice to the owner. So do I have your motion and second correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And you can, yes, and you can have a different motion, and then we'll try and agree. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion for the um, adoption similar to the county's motion with regards to 2,000 square feet and the additional conditions uh, as indicated. Okay. Is there a second? I'll make a second for discussion. Okay. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to make a parallel um, motion to the county at 2,000 <coughs> maximum. Uh, discussion. I'm, I'm just going to hold firm to what I said earlier. I just don't think that we should be picking a square footage just because of that. You know, people have stuff. I, I think that they should just continue to come in front of us and we may, we hear the neighbors, we hear those discussions, we hear those concerns and make our decision based upon that at that time. So I appreciate the comments, but um, I am not in favor of this. Okay. And I would um, be in favor of the 1,360 square foot, which is um, similar to the adjacent neighbor as well as the lot that's two doors down at 1320 and 1360 um, so that it's compliant to what's or it's uh, similar to what's there now and that's a good point Sharon I, I would yeah. agree with you on that as well any other discussion okay all those in favor signify by saying aye aye all of those opposed same sign aye, aye. motion is denied uh, so do I have a countering motion uh, that we can vote upon? I would move that um, the applicant be allowed to build a 1360 uh, square feet, 1,360 square feet building with, with the conditions with the condition. that it, uh, as outlined uh, by the staff. Okay. Is there a second? I'll, um, I'll make a second to that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to go with the staff recommendations including those conditions and the 1360 square feet any other discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye all opposed same sign aye motion carries so we have a motion on the city side of the 1360 limit okay. with the conditions as presented and i believe it comes back to us now for us for further discussion or else it goes back to the joint meeting of the city and county commission. No, that's not correct. It's not correct? Okay. It says, um, I have it written here. I, th I, th <coughs> I thought maybe this would happen, so I quickly <coughs> grabbed the ordinance. It says, when one of the commission's votes to grant a conditional use permit and the other votes to deny it, so basically if you're not in agreement, the permit is deemed to be denied. And the petitioner may appeal the, the decision to uh, the governing bodies, which would be the joint uh, city council and county commission. So if you do not agree, it's considered denied. The applicant has the right to appeal it on. Okay. So this has been denied. You have, um, so Scott, then if you're interested in appealing, that would be to file into the office by Tuesday, September 25th, September 5th, pardon me, at 5 p.m. Thank you. We will move on to the next item, item number three. We'll have our staff report. Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. 
Uh, this is a conditional use permit, number 1759, so allow a larger accessory building. The request for the accessory building is 3,000 square feet and is located at 7,309 West 12th Street. Um, here's the proximity of that. You can see that it's located approximately a quarter mile west of the West 12th Street and Sertoma Avenue uh, intersection and it's located in a subdivision. Uh, it's also in a kind of an island that's surrounded by the city of Sioux Falls uh, with several of its neighbors. Uh, the petitioner would like to construct a 2,500 square foot accessory building uh, and then there's a couple of other smaller accessory buildings on the site uh, that make up the the total request of 3,000 square feet. Uh, currently uh, the site plan is looks like this where they have this, the, the building on the west side of the lot. I believe the petitioner will be presenting a slightly altered uh, site plan based on the conversation earlier today. So I won't get into a whole lot of detail on where the site plan is laid out. Uh, but I will say that the, the lot has uh, is located in a floodplain and the current site plan as it was laid out has the building located within a regulatory floodway which is highly regulated in the floodplain ordinance. Uh, even if the, the petitioner was to be able to move the building out of that floodway, they would have to still meet all the floodplain requirements uh, that is from the regular floodplain that would include possibly raising the base flood or raising the the floor of the building to meet that base flood elevation. Uh, and with the floodplain elevation and being surrounded by the city of Sioux Falls, the city of Sioux Falls and the county do differ in how we treat our floodplains. So once annexation occurs, it is likely that uh, this building would be a non-conforming structure in the floodplain of Sioux Falls. The area around this uh, parcel is surrounded by primarily uh, suburban style subdivisions. Uh, the, there's not much for larger accessory buildings in the area. The, the property, as you can see here, kind of adjacent but down road at the same time, uh, has approximately 2,600 square feet of accessory building. Uh, and as you heard in the last one, typically we try to approve similar sized buildings that are next to each other. Uh, in recently in 2015, there was a parcel located down this way on the map that was requested 3,600 square feet and that request was denied. Kevin, could you point that out again? I was looking down. So it's way down here off the map actually, but hey, it's in that you. same yep, kind of yep. island. Thank you. I'll go over uh, some of the site pictures. So uh, this would be looking down the driveway of the property. You can see the couple of small uh, structures on the property that are existing. Uh, this is the the property where the proposed building would be going. You can see that there is slope here, like the house has been raised up as well as uh, the shed is raised up quite a bit higher than the surrounding property at one it was raised at that time and then this is the driveway looking out um, there's not a whole lot of room in the side yard for any sort of expansion um, as of right now the uh, with staff has a similar request as the or proposal is the, the last uh, conditional use permit where we're recommending a denial based on the last recommendation but have left a um, proposed uh, group of conditions uh, for you to consider if you were to ap approve this construction or this building. Is there any questions? I was just wondering if we're aware of how great the differences are between the city and the county flood ordinances, the floodplain ordinances. They're similar, but my understanding is a city has what's called a free board. So where we would allow that, that floor of the building to be at the base flood elevation, where the city requires, I believe it's two feet 
two feet, so they would have to lift their building two feet higher than where they would be. Within the, the base county. of the. Yep. Okay. So, Kevin, if Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, if you were to build a building and raise the floor two feet above the highest uh, flood uh, level, wouldn't that uh, obstruct and therefore cause the flood uh, to back up and hold the water on the upstream properties? It could, and that's primarily the reason why um, development in the oops too far in the floodway, that dark blue area, is not allowed because the floodway is where the water travels its fastest and it would back up even further in the floodway where in the floodplain the water is, would be just rising and just kind of pooling in that area so that's why you can develop in the flood plain but not the floodway would you, would you mind showing with your arrow where exactly the building is being proposed between the two the dark blue and the light blue i mean so is there room to move it out of the floodway so right now the building is proposed to be right about here and there is room to place it, say, right here. Uh, as I spoke with the petitioner earlier, uh, that does pose some problems as that uh, the septic system is right there. So he might be able to squeeze it behind here. But then that poses some problems with access to the, pro the building with being able to get a driveway in. So it, it, there's kind of pluses and minuses to it all. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Questions on the city side? Okay, um, we would like to hear from the petitioner, please. Would you please come forward and state your name and address? Alex, Aug oh, sorry. Alex Augusted, 7309 West 12th Street. Um, as he mentioned, I did talk to him earlier today about moving that building. I do have a picture here. I don't know if. Way to hand it out. Oh, you got that right there. It'll take a sec. Love your t shirt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait for next season. Me too. Game of Thrones, Scott. <laughs> I didn't know it was. <laughs> hey, winter is coming. <laughs> reading all the change the focus well the I urge you to start on page two. Oh there we go. Yep. There we go. This works. Mm -hmm. As you see here the that's the line for that floodway right there. And then uh, and I and I don't need <coughs> that full space there. I was just gonna the 2500 was just kind of a guess, so I'm willing to go down more, especially since I'll be putting it where that where the garage is now. I'd be getting rid of that, and so I don't need that extra space there. Um, then also we talked about putting it over here, but there's a util or there's an easement here that I'd have to stay away from, and I wouldn't have easy access to the building. Um, and as far as the septic system being there, I did talk to the city today of engineering. Um, there already is, a, they already stubbed a sewer line for my property. And they said I would just have to pay the, the partial fee to get hooked up to it. And which I'm not opposed to doing so that I could get rid of my septic system, which is right here. And then I could build the square foot footage right there. Um, you know, 24, like you guys mentioned before, 2,400 is a reasonable what people have been asking for um, in these subdivisions. And so 2,400 square feet would be plenty for me. <coughs> um, and then, what was the other? Oh, yeah, because before when I first drew that out, I didn't know that that floodway was right there. So I'm actually glad that he pointed that out in his notes. So it'd be out of the floodway. And as far as the uh, person asking for the conditional use permit um, prior, just a block southeast or a block and a half southeast of me, he's up on a hill by resident, like higher end residential homes. And 
I'm down on the bottom of this hill where it's all covered by trees. So none of those residential homes would even be able to see my property or my shed. So it wouldn't be an eyesore for any residential. And right across the way from me is the lake and pond and maybe two residential homes, which I haven't talked to the people across the street um, who would see the building, but the people who are next to me, I have talked to them. They weren't opposed to me putting it on there. Um, and the only other one that I didn't talk to that was right next door is vacant. So um, I know my neighbors are okay with me building a shed there, um, except for I didn't talk to the people across the street. Um, but like I said, I'm willing to lower it down to 2,400. <coughs> I'd, I'd like to have at least 2,400. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions other than that. So, Alex, you may have heard the comment that within the city they would require you to build up two feet higher than, and is that something that you would consider doing? Yeah, I'd, I'd consider doing that if, I mean, I don't necessarily want to put all that much dirt in there, but if that's a requirement that they're, they would want me to have, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it. it. It seems to me that this does look likely for someday to be part of the city and that building a, a, a non-conforming structure would be uh, imprudent. Um, would we be able to add that? Uh, you can add that as a condition okay. that they meet the city's um, floodplain development ordinance. Okay, let's uh, hear some more from others on this. Any questions on the city side for the position petitioner? <coughs> questions on the city side? Do we have an opponent or? I'll ask. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else who wish to speak, wishes to speak to this item? All right, at this time the floor will be closed and each side will um, <coughs> debate or discuss. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I think the idea of doing the 2,400 square feet and may having it make the city's uh, standard uh, uh, makes sense. And, uh, and that it has to be out of the floodway. Right. I'll, I'll make that motion. Excuse me, Commissioner Brown, can you clarify what did you say the size? The 2,400 square feet okay. down from 3,000 and that it would conform to the city's uh, uh, standard for uh, uh, the altitude along with the other conditions. Is there a second? Well, I, I would second if that was mo his motion. Discussion? I was thinking the same thing and then on the size it's it's even a little bit smaller than another one that's in the area so we're still <laughs> staying obviously within the precedence that's been set uh, as long as it's out of the floodway and the other motions that Jeff made I think that makes sense. All right all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay city side entertain a motion. I would uh, make a motion similar to uh, Commissioner Barth where the building would be 2,400 square feet with uh, an added um, condition of meeting the city flood plain, plain requirements. Second. It's been moved and seconded to make a parallel motion to the county including the uh, flood requirements uh, and 2,400 square feet max for Ooh, all Mr. accessory. Ask of staff. So, if it if and when it is annexed into the city, then is it still a non-conforming use at 2,400 square feet? Not if it's been approved at this point by the Joint Commission. Then it's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'm good. Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries on the city side. All right, thank you very much. So <clears throat> if I could just address the commission again quickly. Um, I talked to <coughs> Mr. Zwack and he left, but uh, I need to correct my previous interpretation of the ordinance because when you go, there's several criteria here. Under number two, it says, when both the planning commissions vote to grant a conditional use permit, but the conditions are not identical, 
which yours was one, uh, one square footage, yours was another. The application shall present, be presented to the joint meetings of the city or county commission and city council for final action. So the, the request is automatically forwarded to the joint. No one has to appeal, it just automatically goes. And I guess there'll either be a reconciliation at the elected bodies or, uh, or if they don't agree, then it's denied. So, um, so I just wanted to make that clear. And then that leads me into the next item of, uh, as you heard, we discussed with the city of Del Rapids about amending our ordinance to 2,400 square feet for accessory buildings. Um, I, maybe that's not exactly what you'd like to do. Um, if you'd like us to research this more, uh, to have input from the city planning staff uh, in, in a writing form that we could have a discussion, a f more formal discussion, I'm willing to do that. Uh, it's just, uh, I'll take whatever direction you'd like to give me. <laughs> Just so you're aware, um, with the director, we have had the discussion about increasing uh, the square footage for accessory buildings, so basically doubling from 1,200 to 2,400 square feet, and staff is in favor of that um, increase. Was there any discussion, Diane, about uh, the last example we saw where it's an encapsulated piece of property within the city, but it's still officially county, did you have any discussion about some of those uh, odd conditions? No, and uh, the one other discussion point I think we'd like to have, and I mentioned to Scott, and that is basically doing it based on a proportion of the size of the lot mm -hmm. and what the size of the accessory building could be. So in the case of the first um, item, that was, I think, 0.74 acres. Um, that seems aggressive to have a building that's 2,400 if you've got you know, an acre and a half, like this second item, you know, then it seems a little bit more logical to have a, a larger size building there. So I, I think we have to take into account the size of the, the parcel. So there's more discussion to be had, but I just wanted you to know that we'd had some initial conversations on it. I think that's a, a, a good basis, you know, that we would benefit by having incorporated in what you're drafting. I assume yeah. the city and the county would do that together. Yeah, we would work yeah. together and coming up with a, some kind of language. Yep. So would you like us to come up with some kind of language <laughs> and bring it back to you? So I'm sort of envisioning in my head, if it's, let's say it's less than an acre, it may be <coughs> 1,800 square feet, and if it's more than an acre, it may be allowed to go up to 2,400. Just uh, that might be one option, but I can work with um, uh, Mike Cooper and Jeff Schmidt, and we can come up with a size of a lot and a corresponding size of a proposed building. I think that makes sense for really both mm -hmm. both sides that you, okay. you do that research, if you will, and then, yeah. and then let us know what kind of both parties yep. come to and agreement on. And Could we'll, it maybe put be, oh, sorry, go ahead. Scott. I said we just, we'll put that on as a formal a discussion item then when, when we, we typically meet every month, it seems, so it will, we'll get it on there. And I was just gonna ask if, if it could make sense that it be a percentage yeah. Uh, right. square footage of the lot maybe with a cap so if you get into a four acre parcel maybe you know 10,000 square foot building being an automatic permissive use might be a little extreme but could we do a percentage we could with I, I think from what I have understood the, the the cap that the city would like to see is 2,400 square feet so okay with the cap is I think been discussed already just that mm -hmm lot size and what that sliding scale might be is what we work on. Okay. I don't have any other items. All right, does anyone else have any other items to bring forward? Otherwise, I'll consider motions for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motions for adjournment? So moved. We're adjourned, thank you. Thanks for coming, you guys. Have a good evening. Okay, now we'll start our third meeting of the evening. Um, this will call to order the regular meeting of the